Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting here, my name is Colleen and if you've been here before, welcome back. Today, uh, after a trip to the local grocery stores, and we have two grocery stores in our town that are uh, bigger stores, but after a trip there and seeing how much things have been raising in price, particularly the meat, I was struck dumb, basically, because the price of meat has really gone up a lot. So I'm trying to think of ways to make our budget stretch. And um, one of the ways is to look back at what kinds of meals our families made in the past during the Depression times and just figure out how we can make them work into our uh, repertoire of recipes. A few weeks ago, while I was on um, a little mini vacation to Nanaimo, which is on Vancouver Island off the coast of British Columbia, I was visiting with my brother Ed and his wife Chris and when I arrived at their house in the early afternoon there was a wonderful smell coming from their kitchen and they had worked together to create um, a tuna casserole. I think tuna casseroles have kind of lost their glamour in this day of things that are quick and fast but really uh, a casserole is generally pretty quick to put together. This tuna casserole um, I enjoyed it so much that I asked Chris for the recipe. Now this wasn't Chris's recipe, it was a recipe that Ed remembered from um, having previously in his life. And it, there's a funny story that goes with the tuna casserole, but it's not my story to tell. Uh, so I, I will just carry on and make the uh, casserole. But I got a little bit of a start because I want to show you that it can be quite quick and easy to make this and do it in sort of real time. So I have cut up two uh, ribs of celery into strips and I'm gonna chop them finer. And I have one small onion and I've chopped some parsley. And I was gonna use dried parsley, but uh, when I went to the grocery store today, they were having a twofer on the parsley and they were nice big bunches not the little plastic uh, salu packs so um, I was happy to get this because I'll use the remainder put it into the into my dehydrator and dehydrate it for use future use so the first thing I need to do is heat up my oven to 425 degrees and start this pot of water that I have on the stove for the egg noodles to cook so just give me a second Okay, that part's done. So once I've got that done, the directions on the recipe, which I'll link the recipe in the directions below. I'm not going to tell you the exact ingredients because as I said, it's not my recipe. But when Chris printed the recipe off for me, it had the name of the website that, that it came from. So I'd like to properly credit them and I will put a link um, to the recipe in the description below. So I'm just going to cut these things up. I've got a couple of onions. Well, no, it's one onion. Uh, just a small onion that I've cut in half. And it's starting to be fall. No, it's full on fall here where I live. It's uh, chilly in the mornings and we have had um, the bears loose in our little town. Of course, it's at this time of the year that they are busy looking for uh, food that will help them bulk up for the winter time so that they can survive hibernation. We, uh, we do get some long cold winters here, or at least uh, they feel long and cold. Maybe that's got something to do with my age now, I'm not sure. <laughs> because I feel like I enjoyed it a lot more when I was younger than I do now. So that could be the case, I guess. But uh, yes, the pumpkins have been picked and the Canadian Thanksgiving is now past us. And I'm sure I'm probably making a right racket here. 
but I'm gonna carry on anyway. So it won't be long now until everything's buttoned up for the winter. My husband and I spent last weekend getting all the garden stuff put away and moving the things around in the shed for ease of use. We have uh, finished the last cut of the lawn, so we opened the, the uh, door of our shed and we moved the snowblower to the lawn and put the lawnmower in the deep far end and put the snowblower by the door so you know that it won't be long until we have to use it. In fact, it snowed a little bit here uh, the other day, just like a little reminder that it won't be long until it's here. So now this needs to go into a frying pan, just the onions and the celery, to soften them. So that takes between five and seven minutes. So that should be the amount of time it takes to bring the water to a boil in the pot. And I will just carry on. So I'm going to get busy and do that, and I'll be back in a minute. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on the onions and celery. <laughs> Probably famous last words. But I'm going to keep an eye on them and I'm going to carry on with making the topping mix. So I will grab a bowl and get started on that and uh, the process is pretty simple. Now in this bowl I have one tablespoon of melted butter which I just measured out and then put in the bowl and put it in the microwave. So that helps it to go a little faster. And I need a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. And they just go straight into this mixture, more or less. I did make this for my husband um, when I got home from the island and we enjoyed it thoroughly. So that's why I'm uh, happy to be making it again. Now I need one tablespoon of parsley in there and I'm using fresh so I'm kind of just putting a pinch and a fork. fork to mix it all up with. You want to make sure that the bread crumbs are well coated with the butter. It's not an awful lot of butter in there, but um, it does manage to coat them quite well. Hmm, I better give this a stir. I also noticed that the water is boiling for the noodles, so I'm going to dump the noodles in right now. You have to keep a good eye on those because you definitely don't want them to be anything more cooked than al dente because after this all comes together then it's going into the oven for 25 minutes so we need to make sure that we don't end up with a gloppy mess in the in the pan when we're done so i'm just going to give those a stir if you've ever cooked egg noodles before you know that you can't turn your back on them because they will boil, boil over on the stove if you're not really mindful that they're there. So I'll be keeping a close eye out there because cleaning the stove off is not as much fun as you would think. And into this mixture goes a half a cup of cheddar cheese. And I'm using just an old fork packaged one. Although I'm sure if you uh, grated it yourself, it would add even more moisture to the dish, but I used this the last time and it worked just fine. So now I'm going to set that aside because I'm happy with it. I'll put it right there for the time being. I'll clean up a little bit after myself so that everything isn't in the way. If you've ever made anything from scratch that required you to have noodles in it, such as this recipe that we're making today, the tuna casserole. Um, it, I'm always left to question whether or not the noodles should be measured before they're cooked or after they're cooked. In this case, because of the, using egg noodles, um, I assumed that the recipe meant three uh, cups of noodles bef before it was cooked, because egg noodles cook down quite a bit so that wouldn't have been enough egg noodle. So I'm going to recommend for this recipe that you measure your egg noodles before they're cooked and then cook them and what you're left with is, is what you need for the recipe. I'm gonna go back to stirring and then I'll be right back. 
While the noodles are finishing cooking, I'm going to start to bring this recipe all together. So I have one can of tuna. It's just a five ounce can and this one is a skipjack in water. So flight flight like tuna, you could use chunk tuna or whatever kind of tuna you like. In fact, I'm kind of interested in trying this recipe with salmon in it. Um, I think it might be good as well. But uh, I think this can was on sale. Uh, they were regular $3.99. They were on for $1.99. So that's pretty cheap meat going into this recipe. And I know that you can buy it cheaper than that, a cheaper quality of tuna. And I'm not sure that that wouldn't work just perfectly fine in a casserole. If you're making it for a sandwich, you might want a little better quality, but uh, in a casserole, that would probably, the bargain would probably work really well. I'm going to add into that, um, what is this? It's a regular size can of mushroom, cream of mushroom soup, which, you know, <laughs> went into a lot of recipes that we uh, used to have years ago. Um, they used cream of chicken, cream of celery, cream, cream of mushroom in a lot of different recipes. I also have here defrosted two thirds of a cup about of uh, frozen peas. And I defrosted them in the microwave and might have taken that a little too far, but I'm sure that they're going to be fine for this recipe. We also need a third of a cup of milk and that celery mixture. Goes in, in here too. And I'm just gonna mix this up good. And the last thing that we need to put in there, if I've, but I'm gonna check my recipe and make sure, is the noodles. I check the recipe because I have more cheese that has to go in here. I need a cup of cheese. I'm going to say that's a healthy half cup. And if I can use my skills and get into this bag, man. a bit like you know a gloppy mess but let me assure you that it's delicious and then I'm going to put into this mixture a tablespoon of celery or you know a pinch of fresh it would be perfectly fine to have dried celery in this recipe as well just adjust accordingly keeping in mind that your dried herbs um, Maybe don't require, it doesn't require as much of them. Um, you can always put it in, put in a little bit and taste it and see how it's going and um, go from there. And I'm just going to test these noodles now to see where they stand. And I'm going to just rinse them under cold water for a minute. Drain them off pretty good. We don't need a lot of moisture left in them at this stage. And then bring the noodles to the bowl. And stir it in. Make sure that it's all well mixed together so you don't have one spot of noodles all stuck together with no sauce, saucy stuff on them. Then I have buttered just one of these white Corningware um, casserole dishes. And I'm just going to dump this into here. And 
and then I'll level it off. I'm not going to pack it down too tight. I'm just basically going to level it off because if you pack it down, I fear that the noodles will get, you know, too stuck together. And then I'm just going to cover the whole thing with the mixture of uh, breadcrumbs for the topping. And again, just level that off. And my oven has reached the desired temperature, or at least I'm going to double check. Yes, it's there. And I'm going to pop this into the oven uh, at 425 for around 20 to 25 minutes until it's nice and golden on the top. Now when I made it the last time, I made it around noon, just shortly after we had lunch, and I just set it aside on the counter until um, my husband came home from work and then while well, he ran and had a shower, I popped it in the oven and um, it was fantastic. So. Hoping for the same result this time, but I will be back when it's um, coming out of the oven so that you can have a look at it and see what the final product looks like. Um, this is a recipe that I know that we'll use again and again, and I'm happy to be able to add it to uh, our regular calendar of food that we enjoy eating. So we'll see you soon. Well, here we are folks, fresh out of the oven, Smoking hot still, nice and brown. Um, this is a beautiful casserole and I do, uh, do recommend it. I am happy to see some, some of the fall things going on sale in the grocery stores and I think that more and more we have to be uh, careful with our dollars. So I'm uh, going to, you know, if, if there's interest, I'm definitely going to be uh, doing some more um, maybe money saving casseroles um, coming up. So one of the things, um, if you happen to be a Canadian viewer that, um, that's um, just past Thanksgiving like I have, one of the things that I noticed in the grocery store today and I bought three bags was cranberries. And um, I've just put them, put them into the freezer for now. And when I get a little time later, I'm gonna turn those into cranberry sauce and I will have them uh, for the Christmas season and beyond. Uh, they also make great gifts to give as well, so I might do uh, that with some of them. In fact, while I think about it, I might go back and get a few more bags just so that I can do some gift giving. Um, the regular $3.99 a bag and they were on for $1.99, so that's a, that's a good bargain. So anyway, um, I'm going to end with uh, this lovely picture, I'm going to uh, cut a piece and put it here on the end so that you can see what it looks like uh, cut from the pan. I hope that you are all well and that you continue to stay that way in these uncertain times. And I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye, everybody.